Father Don is away on retreat. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known. And from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, because without you, we are not able to please you, mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our <coughs> hearts. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We now have the readings for the day. A reading from the book of Genesis. Realizing that their father was dead, Joseph's brothers said, what if Joseph still bears a grudge against us and pays us back in full for the wrongdoing we have done to him? So they approached Joseph saying, your father gave us this instruction before he died. Say to Joseph, I beg you, Forgive the crime of your brothers and the wrong they did in harming you. Now, therefore, please forgive the crimes of the servants of the God of your father. Joseph wept when they spoke to him. Then his brothers also wept, fell down before him and said, we are here as your slaves. But Joseph said to them, do not be afraid. Am I in the place of God? Even though you intended to do me harm, God intended it for good in order to preserve a numerous people as he is doing today. So have no fear. I myself will provide for you and your little ones. In this way, he reassured them, speaking kindly to them. The word of the Lord. The psalm for today is a portion of Psalm 103. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger and of great kindness. He will not always accuse us, nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor rewarded us according to our wickedness. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so is his mercy great upon those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our sins from us. As a father cares for his children, so does the Lord care for those who fear him. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Welcome those who are weak in faith, but not for the purpose of quarreling over opinions. Some believe in eating anything, while the weak eat only vegetables. Those who eat must not despise those who abstain, and those who abstain must not pass judgment on those who eat. For God has welcomed them. Who are you to pass judgment on servants of another? It is before their own Lord that they stand or fall and they will be upheld for the Lord is able to make them stand. Some judge one day to be better than another while others judge all days to be alike. Let all be fully convinced in their own minds. Those who observe the day observe it in honor of the Lord. 
Also, those who eat, eat in honor of the Lord, since they give thanks to God, while those who abstain, abstain in honor of the Lord and give thanks to God. We do not live to ourselves and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother or sister? Or you, why do you despise your brother or sister? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then each of us will be accountable to God. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Peter came and said to Jesus, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you, 77 times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold, together with his wife and children and all his possessions, and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him. Have patience with me and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until he could pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed. And they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, you wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Last week and this week, we have bookend gospel readings. Last Sunday, Jesus gave us instructions about what we should do when conflict arises. And this week, we hear the next step, how to forgive. 
which is inevitably something we need when there is conflict. I've often heard people say, forgive and forget. This is definitely not new because in the early 1600s, Shakespeare had King Lear say to his daughter, pray you now, forget and forget. Cervantes had Don Quixote use a similar line and I've heard it from friends in 12-step programs and from my grandmother. But this saying really troubles me because it usually comes with the implied criticism that there's something wrong with me if I can't forget. We have just passed the 19th anniversary of 9-11. So it's especially appropriate for me to say to you, yes, forgive, but don't ever forget. Forgive the perpetrators of terrorist acts, but don't forget the 3,000 some people who lost their lives in those events. Forgive those who have become our enemies for whatever reason. Forgive the slave traders who brought so many captives to America. And forgive those who abused and continue to abuse people of color. But don't ever forget and get to work to undo the decades of harm. Forgive those who are filled with rage, resentment, and hatred. But don't forget the evil that harboring these emotions causes. And never, never forget just because you're trying to avoid dealing with a painful memory. Forgive. Because we must forgive. One of the things that Jesus is most emphatic about is the need, well actually the requirement for us to forgive. Jesus knows that forgiveness is something that we need for our own soul's sakes. He knows that if we collect and hold on to all the hurts that have been done to us, we will eventually cut ourselves off from everyone around us. Because we are all imperfect, it's impossible to be in relation with people without being hurt. And sometimes people can hurt us in really big ways. Eventually, surrounding ourselves with all those injuries builds a wall between us and the rest of the world. If we refuse to forgive, our spirit stops believing that anybody else can forgive us. We assume that everybody else, just like us, is holding on to our mistakes and faults. And then we isolate ourselves. Worst of all, that constructs a barrier between us and God's grace because we can't ask for and receive God's forgiveness. And so we come to the words of today's gospel. Clearly, Peter is approaching, approaching Jesus with an agenda. I kind of suspect that he's hoping that Jesus will let him complain about somebody. Instead, Jesus makes an astonishing response. Peter, don't forgive seven times, forgive 
77 times. In other words, forgive as many times as you have to. Now, clearly, this does not mean that you should be stupid. If every time you pass somebody on the street, they trip you, that doesn't mean you have to keep walking that way. Go a different way. If somebody is going to enter a plane's cockpit and hold a gun to a pilot's head, lock the cockpit. Better yet, prevent the gun from being available and lock the cockpit. Jesus does acknowledge in several talks that the world can be a bad and dangerous place. He says, be kind and gentle like doves, but he also adds, as wise as serpents. So what is this 77 times forgiveness about? Think about your own experience. Somebody deliberately cheated you or lied about you or got you into trouble at school or work. What do you do? If you're a Christian, you must forgive them. That doesn't mean you can't try to put it right, but you must forgive. For most of us, forgiveness takes a lot of work. And once we do forgive someone, very often, five minutes later, we're mad again. Or we're talking to ourselves about how John did this or Mary said that. And so we have to forgive over and over again. An hour later, am I mumbling under my breath? Forgive again. Next night, do I have trouble sleeping because I'm arguing with somebody in my head? Forgive them again. Jesus is so aware of the importance of forgiveness in human life that he makes it a key component of his prayer. Forgive us our sins in the same way we forgive those who sin against us. Pretty much every one of our services contains the Lord's Prayer. It's a contract for mutual forgiveness. And there are no loopholes. Several times a day we say it, acknowledging that we are sinners and need forgiveness and promising that we will forgive other sinners. <clears throat> now, as I said, forgiveness can be tough. Sometimes I really have no desire whatsoever to forgive. I want to hold on to my anger. When I can't pray that my adversary be forgiven, the most I can do is pray to want to forgive. And that's often enough. Forgiveness requires discipline. Forgiveness is for strong, muscular Christians. It means we cannot indulge in the pleasant practice of self-justification. We can't let ourselves feel like the poor, innocent victim. It means that even if you are the one who has been wrong, you have to humble yourself and take the action of forgiving. That's not fair, you say. Well, no. It has nothing to do with fair. It has to do with health and wholeness. Your health and wholeness. I'm reminded of a saying, holding resentment is like eating poison and expecting the other person to keel over. Forgiveness is life-giving. So spend some time today 
Ask yourself, are there people you have not forgiven? They don't have to become your best buddies, but forgiving them is not optional. If you need to, pray that God will touch your spirit and make you willing to forgive. Don't sweep things under your inner rug where they can breathe. And for sure, don't be like today's selfish servant who took forgiveness for himself and refused to forgive another. Remember, God has forgiven you and undertake the challenging work of forgiveness for the sake of your souls and for the sake of our community. Amen. Amen. Let us affirm the faith of the church. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally God the Father, God of God, light of light, to God, to God, God of God me, of all I need of the Father, to bring all things to me, for us and for our salvation, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we begin in Christ the Virgin Mary, and with faith in Him, for our sake was crucified and on His fire. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day He rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He is ascended to heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and is sitting on the last no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in the Holy Catholic and Catholic Church. We acknowledge one that has the forgiveness of sins, the will of the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people. God's forgiveness is limitless, but our own freedom is not. Holy Father, your abundant love walks with us every day of our lives, and you forgive us again and again. Help us to do likewise, not holding on to the deep hurts and grudges. With your spirit, inspire us to forgive unconditionally. God of forgiveness. Deepen our understanding of your kingdom, that it does not follow the same norms that our society. Help us to pursue you, your will, and not personal gain and status. God of forgiveness. We pray for the church that it may follow the path of Jesus and teach your love and forgiveness to the world. God of forgiveness. We remember the destructive forest fires and increasing loss of life in the western portion of our country. Help the firefighters and other emergency workers to respond to these tragedies. God of forgiveness. Enable us to better be better stewards of the earth and care about our environment, not only for ourselves, but for our future generations. God of forgiveness. Inspire our present president and all politicians to pursue truth. God of forgiveness. Lead us to assist the unemployed and poor. God of forgiveness. If it be your will, heal the sick and welcome the dying into your kingdom. God of forgiveness. Lord, keep us in your love. Preserve our community 
and do not let us be separated from one another. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most of all, we confess that we have sinned against you in God, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We are not loving with our whole heart. We are not loving with our neighbors and ourselves. We are truly sorry and we come to repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may make a life in your will and walk in your ways. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And now so with you. We do not uh, collect an offering at this time. So if you have brought an offering, please leave it in the plates at the back. And we invite those of you who are following us remotely, if you would like to contribute to the work of our ministry, we would welcome any donations. All things come of thee, O Lord. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, for you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn Proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes to the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the savior and redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you, in him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, 
which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we, we remember, remember his death, death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Saint Anne, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass. Alleluia! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us seek the peace. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. At this time, we are not able to receive the blessed sacrament physically. So we invite you to make your spiritual communion. Let us pray the prayer of St. Alphonsus together. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to teach you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive that sacrament, come and be spiritually within my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you, never permitting to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal Father, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as the members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have blessed the spiritual food in the sacrament of the body of God that sends us now to the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and the kingdom of our through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May the blessing of Almighty God descend upon you and remain with you always. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.